All right, so here we are in the Digital Audio Workstation. This plugin in Logic is called the Channel EQ, but there's a similar one on every single audio program out there. This is a basic parametric equalizer that has the handy feature of showing you on a graph what your filters are doing to the sound. So I've prepared a song. I took out the vocals so that it's not distracting while we listen to the changes in the sound. And as you can see, this is the mix of the song as it was released, minus vocals. We can go through and look at each of these filter types and explore what they do to the sound. So first, let's look at this high pass filter. When I turn it on, it's set to 30 hertz as being the point around which the sound starts dropping off. It's also got the slope, which right now is 24 decibels per octave. We can make that lower or higher. Let's make it very high for now so you can clearly hear what it's doing. As we raise the frequency, the low end begins to go away. Now we're left with nothing but the very highest frequencies. Sometimes you'll hear this effect used with automation, like in electronica and other styles of music like that. So that's a high pass filter. Meanwhile, at the other end, we've got the low pass filter. Let's also move that to the steepest slope so it's easy to hear. Way up at 20,000 hertz, that's the highest most people can hear. So as we'd reduce that, it'll begin to muffle the sound. This effect is also sometimes used with automation to create, to create an effect. Now let's look at the low shelving filter. This has a frequency, an amount of gain, and Q, or bandwidth. Let's look at the low end, let's say everything below 120 hertz. Now, if you're listening on a laptop or a phone, you're probably not gonna hear this unless you have headphones on. But let's boost the low frequencies. And now let's cut them. The interesting thing about the shelving filter is you notice it levels out again after this point that you set. So instead of just being cut all the way down, it levels out so there is still some bass on there. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you're boosting the frequency, if you're boosting the frequency, as you go up higher, you are changing the overall amplitude of the track. So you'll notice this track is peaking at about minus three decibels full scale. If we increase the low end a lot more, you'll see that it is now clipping. So you have to be aware of how much gain you're adding because it is going to affect the overall amplitude level of your track. Okay, so that's the low shelf filter. Here's a high shelf filter. Let's add some high end and take away some high end. And now the peaking and dipping filters. I'm gonna start the song over so that we have some more time. All right, so the frequency you get to choose, there's the gain, and there's the Q. This is the most versatile filter among the parametric EQ. Let's start by boosting a small range. This is part of the mid-range. We can also change what frequency we're boosting. It has kind of a similar sound to it as, as you sweep it, as sweeping the lower high pass filters are, but it's not the same. It's just kind of similar effect. We can also reduce that range. Sounds almost like a phaser there. And you can make the bandwidth or Q wider or narrower. An interesting thing happens as you make it narrower and narrower, it sounds more like a single note. Especially if you can find a frequency, there we go. Right on that note. Now we'll raise that. That note right there. There are several harmonics of other instruments that are hitting this frequency right there, and so they are getting boosted, and you have this strange whistling like resonance. So the extremely narrow filters are more useful in very specialized applications. 
they don't sound that normal. So this is a lot of fun to play around with. I hope you have some software where you can try out some of these things.